Hi everybody, welcome to week two of this eight-week JavaScript course. Uh, things are going to get a little more intense. Uh, the first homeworks have come in and they were excellent, so I feel comfortable with the, the progress that we're making and the speed at which it's being learned. Uh, this week we're going to go through um, the next couple of chapters in the book. We're going to be looking at chapter three and chapter four. Uh, some people don't have the book. Some people haven't bought the book. Some people have found the first edition online. Some have bought the current version. Um, so the way I'm doing my reading list is um, kind of hitting the first version and then talking about the, the modern version. I think it's worth third edition now. So chapters three and four for the current and two and three for the non-current. But all you have to do is look at the titles. There was very little change between the releases. There were more addendums created. So... If you read this, depending on your text here, and if you you know if you still don't have the book, um, what you can do is go to my own website and at least get the the ebook until you can afford to buy a, the real book. So this is it. It's uh, mm214.com/javascript.pdf. Um, I may have shown you that before. If not, that's it. So anyway, back to our plan for this week. Uh, uh, I've got it. Everything with a paperclip is usually a document, a uh, file, something like that, uh, or an article. And this is my reserved words document. We're at the point now where we've covered variables. Now we have to really focus on what we do not want to use as variable names. So when choosing names for your JavaScript, avoid these reserved words. And that's because they're keywords in the language. So what you need to do is when you're making variables, just make them something um, that you know would be in the language that makes sense. Like if you have a dozen eggs and you want to put it in a variable, you might have um, num eggs as your variable name. You know, something that makes sense to you. Um, so keep that. That's one for the desktop, I think. Um, then we can go into our content. So I have a video here of conditions, just if statements. The thing about if statements is you're going to learn those first because they're easiest. So they just say basically, if it rains, I will use an umbrella. If then. Um, as you grow, you'll learn switch statements and then ternaries finally, which are shorthanded conditions. Um, right now, as long as you can solve problems with the if statement, you're going to be good. We can grow, but you will learn switch statements and ternaries as well because other, other developers like to use them. And you will someday like to use them as well. Um, I think for now, though, the if statement's fine because that solves problems. And here are the condition demos. I have another video here on more variables and operators just to keep the, the momentum going. I have a very important video about debugging and JavaScript errors from chapter five in the, in the third edition. And I have another video that covers chapter two from last week and I have chapter three. So this is because we're finishing chapter two's reading this week and chapter three is covered here as well. So you, you know, we have different learning styles here at Mesa. If you, you know, don't like the reading, you can watch the video. I think at all costs, you need to practice the code, whatever you do, that's a must because that is actually performing the duties of the job. So whether you learn via video or text, um, I'm, I'm fine with either. I, my quizzes are open book, as you know, and you can have multiple chances at those. But at this early level, the important thing is to get some degree of success. So you get confidence, right? Um, and that's why you know the assignments are the way they are, and that's why the quizzes are the way they are. So you can start getting some successes, get a feel of what's going on without being completely in uh, intimidated. Um, all right, so I have more videos, arrays, and looping around them. Now that's a little more of an advanced concept. We'll be rehashing over the next couple of weeks. Um, so these, the while loops and the arrays, are both very important. Um, please watch those videos, and then we get into pre-built objects in JavaScript. One is the date object. And then I have a couple of HTML files that have the methods, the functions that are built into the data object. So if you could read those, that would be stellar. Um, the string object as well. It has all the, well, most of the functions that I use for, you know, getting uh, things done with string objects. Anyway, uh, as we go back, um, you will see there is a homework. This homework can be a little complicated. So our job is to make a calculator using the example created in class. This is the class. So I've screencasted how to attack this homework. Please watch it. Please take that, the code down and build off it. That'll be easier. Um, so that is the homework that's due at the end of the week. 
and have a great week, everybody. Again, I'm happy to do screencasts for you if you get into a jam. I had a few people ask me last week, and I think they liked it. Um, so that's kind of how we can learn in this crazy, challenging, accelerated online environment.